Hello, everyone, and welcome back to another captivating story on our channel. We have an intriguing tale to share with you today that will surely love you amazed and inspired. So grab your favorite beverage, sit back, and prepare to embark on a journey of resilience, personal growth, and poetic justice. Without further ado, let's dive into today's story. Today's story encapsulates the journey of liberation from betrayal, the ascendance towards truth, and the embrace of a brighter future. It's a tale of resilience and redemption, a saga where shattered trust finds restoration and love discovers its grace. This chronicle focuses on the path of survival after infidelity, with a unique perspective tailored to men who have faced this arduous ordeal. Let me address the man who has just stumbled upon that heart-wrenching text message. The man who has discovered his partner's unfaithfulness, leaving him sleepless and unable to eat for days or weeks. This story is for the man who, despite her betrayal, still carries a flame of love and yearns to take her back. I, too, was once that man back in August when my world was abruptly upended. My wife, the mother of our two children, succumbed to infidelity and even contemplated leaving our union for her illicit affair. Here's what I want you to know. There's nothing you could have done to prevent it. She is the one making a grave mistake, and sooner or later she will realize it. The key lies in rebuilding yourself, so when that day arrives, you can respond with clarity and purpose. Whether you choose to welcome her back into your life or not, there's a seemingly simple yet challenging trick that can turn the tide in your favor. By adopting an attitude of detachment, you reclaim control over your emotions. It's astounding how this approach has proven effective time and again, like a finely tuned mechanism. Even in my own experience, I've witnessed its transformative power. Here's what you need to do. Face emotional detachment. Begin by convincing yourself that you no longer care. Even before your heart and mind fully embrace it, there is an undeniable power in withholding your emotions from cheating woman. Deny her the satisfaction of seeing you upset or being able to manipulate your feelings. I won't sugarcoat it. It will be challenging, and at first, it may feel like you're battling against your own instincts. However, the moment you successfully execute this approach, you will witness its immediate impact. A wise man once told me that in situations like these, the person who cares the least usually wields the most control. I didn't comprehend it at first. It took me reaching a state of emotional detachment to truly understand its significance. When I discovered her infidelity, I found myself pleading and begging with her every single day for a whole month until it finally ceased. As parents, a therapist advised us that I should move out but continue being a father figure in our home. This arrangement meant that when she went out, I stayed home with the kids, and when I was absent, she would be there for them, ensuring a smooth transition without any drastic disruption. Initially, I would sit there, tormented, observing her getting all dolled up before going out, and we would inevitably argue on those occasions. But one day, something within me shifted. I chose to approach it differently. I treated it as if I were simply babysitting for a friend. The profound concern that etched across her face as she left the house was the first affirmation that my new strategy was working. As weeks went by, I began to genuinely find peace with the unfolding events. Our relationship was crumbling. It seemed like she was ready to leave and be with her affair partner. I refused to engage in arguments or bring up the situation at all when I was in her presence. My focus was solely on the well-being of our children. Then, one day, the routine continued, I was required to be at the house by 10 p.m. because she had plans with the other guy that night. So, I showed up. She asked me how she looked and I sincerely told her she looked great and encouraged her to have a good time, assuring her not to worry about the kids. I even hinted that she was free to stay overnight if she wanted to. She hesitated again, took slow steps towards her car. Meanwhile, I stayed up and spoke to a friend until around 3 a.m. That's when my phone started buzzing incessantly with text messages. It was her. The first message read, Are you and the kids okay? This was a message I had never received before. Then came the next message. Please, can we talk when I get back? I chose to ignore it. She returned around 5 a.m. And I was fast asleep by then. As I started my truck to leave for my grandmother's house where I was temporarily staying, she appeared by my passenger side, her eyes filled with tears. I rolled down my window and asked if she could please make it quick, giving her 10 minutes of my time. 
Reluctantly, I allowed her to get in and she began pouring out her emotions, explaining how, for the past month, the same amount of time I had stopped displaying my emotions towards her. She expressed deep regret for everything that had transpired, emphasizing that if I would just grant her another chance, she would go above and beyond to earn back my trust. However, I respectfully declined. That day, which occurred months ago, still resonates within me, and I continue to draw strength from it as I drive forward. If you find yourself needing assistance, consider reflecting on the gravity of her actions. While it may not be the healthiest approach, for me, it became a source of empowerment. The realization that she was engaging in intimate acts with another man, as painful as it once was, became fuel to treat her as what she was, a pleasure for someone else. Making the wise decision to turn away and redirect your focus towards personal growth and well-being is paramount. By doing so, you reclaim control of your life and demonstrate that you refuse to let someone else's betrayal define you. Direct your energy and emotions towards self-improvement. In this situation, it appears that your partner resorted to emotional manipulation in an attempt to maintain control by exploiting your feelings of guilt and anger. Gaslighting, shifting blame, and downplaying their actions are a few manipulative tactics to be aware of. It is crucial to recognize these strategies and resist any further attempts to manipulate or pressure you into reconciliation if it does not align with your genuine desire. Always remember that with or without your ex-partner, you possess the power to build a fulfilling life for yourself. You deserve better. The key to healing and making progress lies in taking care of your physical and mental well-being, pursuing your goals and passions, and surrounding yourself with a supportive network of people. Keep your focus on personal growth and development. Prioritize yourself and never forget that you hold the power to shape a brighter future. You have already demonstrated resilience and that strength will continue to guide you in your future endeavors. By striving to become the best version of yourself, you will attract the love and happiness you truly deserve. Here's the important thing. When you start dating again, she may try to entice you by emulating the things she did for the other person. She might dress in similar outfits or wear the same lingerie. However, this only demonstrates her willingness to put in the same level of effort she invested in the other person, not her commitment to repairing the relationship. When you achieve professional success and share travel pictures, she may like them and express a desire to be there. The ex will not leave you in peace because she believes there is still a chance for reconciliation. If you clearly communicate the steps necessary to rebuild trust and repair the damage, she may choose to complete them and then have the opportunity to reconcile. Remember, implementing the Grey Rock technique and applying the 180 strategy are for your own well-being and not a direct path towards reconciliation. There's a saying that a man's greatest superpower is the ability to walk away. We often forget about this power as we strive to build a family. When our partners betray us, we tend to fall into the sunk cost fallacy. Despite the hurt, we still genuinely love them. But remember, you have the choice to walk away. Channel your anger and frustration into the gym, your work, your studies, or any endeavor that helps you become the best version of yourself. Initially, it may feel forced, but gradually, you'll start to internalize it. You'll notice that flicker of doubt and feel a surge of power. It confirms that you're on the right path. Embrace it. You're grown beyond the past and you deserve better. You're well on your way to achieving it. Now, let's move on to the next story. With 0800 karma carries an extra weight. Let me clarify that I don't necessarily believe in karma, nor do I expect to wait around for it. Life can be unjust at times, and we've all encountered undeserved hardships, and we've all encountered undeserved hardship. The concept of justice portrayed in Hollywood often seems far-fetched. In my belief, karma is often something that unfolds behind the scenes, taking years to manifest. By that point, ideally, we have moved on and found ourselves in a neutral place. However, I have a story that's simply too remarkable not to share with you all. My ex abruptly ended our relationship in October. We were happy, living together. We were discussing our future. I had met his family and developed a strong bond with them. They genuinely liked me, and I felt the same way about them. My ex couldn't provide a concrete reason for the breakup. Instead, he offered vague excuses. However, months later, I discovered through a mutual friend and neighbor that he had cheated on me with a coworker he claimed was just a friend. 
He left me for her, confirming my suspicions all along. Fast forward seven months and I've been putting in the work. I started therapy six months ago and continue to make progress. I've embraced journaling, delved into self-help books, and engaged in deep self-reflection. Analyzing the patterns in my relationships, I've focused on my physical health, regularly doing CrossFit and running five kilometers three times a week. I embarked on a 40-mile backpacking trip with another adventure on the horizon. I've reconnected with old friends and forged new friendships. I'm carefully planning a career change and cautiously re-entering the dating scene. Just last week, I met a man through online dating, and he asked me out on a date for Monday evening. He took charge, selecting the restaurant, making reservations, and setting the time. I arrived at the agreed-upon location, and when the waitress approached us, she inquired about our seating preference. I replied, I'm not picky, and he suggested a shaded table. As we were escorted to our seats, I noticed another couple sitting at a nearby table. Initially, I didn't pay much attention, but I couldn't help but notice the guy's discomfort and restlessness in my peripheral vision. Striving to be fully present for my date and avoid rudeness, I resisted the temptation to focus on the situation behind my date's shoulder. It's unbelievable. My ex, who was once in great shape during our time together due to his military background and our commitment to a healthy lifestyle, is now unrecognizably overweight, at least 60 pounds heavier than when I last saw him. He's sitting with his new partner, who appears to be fairer than me. Despite this surprising encounter, I don't want to be impolite or let it affect my date. My current date and I are genuinely connecting, engaging in enjoyable conversations and sharing laughs. He has a great sense of humor, asks thoughtful questions, and interacts pleasantly with the waiter. However, I can't help but notice my ex leaning across the table and engaging in some kind of conversation with his partner, who reciprocates by leaning in as well. Whatever he said seems to have angered her as she spends the remainder of their meal with a scowling, pouty expression, not uttering a single word. Meanwhile, my ex stares straight ahead as if he's wearing a neck brace, avoiding any glance in my direction as if it would be the end of the world if our eyes met. The two of them maintain an awkward silence, not exchanging a single word, their tension palpable and thick enough to cut with a knife. My ex appears utterly miserable, and never once during their time together did it strike me that they were a happy, healthy couple enjoying each other's company. Despite this unexpected encounter, I continue to enjoy my date night fully immersed in the wonderful time we're having. I refrain from making eye contact with my ex, and as far as he's concerned, it seems that I haven't even noticed his presence. To be honest, I could barely recognize him amidst his bloated cheeks and visible belly rolls. I wasn't entirely convinced that it was him. When my ex finally turned to leave, he had to face me directly. Instead of stealing a glance at him, I remained focused on my date, maintaining eye contact and nodding along to our conversation. I didn't give my ex the satisfaction of confirming his identity as the very overweight individual who just walked by me. He wasn't worth even a scrap of my attention. I chose to let him go without that final confirmation. I was genuinely enjoying my date and had no interest in dwelling on my ex. As my ex walked past me to leave, I didn't take a last look or engage with him in any way. I simply continued having a wonderful night with my date. He asked for my number, expressing his desire to see me again. We've been texting since then. And to top it off, my date is six foot four, incredibly handsome <laughs> and a firefighter. I want to clarify that my intention in sharing this story is not to give anyone false hope that they will have a similar experience. I never expected to see my ex again, and I had already blocked him on every possible platform long ago. He will remain blocked for life. Throughout the entire situation, I didn't feel any negative emotions towards his new partner or towards him. There was no hatred, jealousy, or even curiosity. I simply felt mild pity for my ex, witnessing how visibly depressed he looked, especially considering his partner's angry reaction. I couldn't help but think, lady, you pursued a taken man and got him. What are you so upset about? You got everything you wanted. Afterward, I couldn't help but wonder if the fair partner's behavior was their way of trying to show that they did nothing wrong. It's possible they were two mutual friends, and my ex may have lied to his family about the reasons for our breakup, presenting it as a mutual decision. Alternatively, it could have been their strange way of punishing my ex by making him sit there and listen to me and my date hitting it off. It was an odd situation because my ex was clearly uncomfortable and wanted to leave. 
However, I refused to let their presence ruin the enjoyable company I was in. I hope that my story provides some entertainment for those of you who are still in the trenches. It does get better. You will move on. But it does require taking responsibility and putting in the work. You have to want it and take care of yourself so that if you ever run into a cheating ex, it's evident that your life has taken an upward trajectory. And even if you never have a run-in, you'll look and feel 10 times better. I like to think that all the work I've put in over the past 7 months has paid off, but I know that I know that I'm not nearly finished yet. When I saw the bloated man who I once thought I would marry, all I felt was pity. The op's lack of emotional response and indifference towards their ex and the affair partner showcases their growth and maturity. They were able to enjoy their date and continue developing their new relationship without being negatively affected by their ex's presence. This demonstrates resilience and a strong sense of self. However, it's important to note that relying on karma or expecting it to bring satisfaction or closure may not always be productive. Karma in this case, seemed to complement the op's healing journey and served as a reminder of the importance of personal growth, self-care, and seizing new opportunities to create a brighter future. A similar story highlights the relatability of the experience and offers hope to those who have gone through similar betrayals, even if justice hasn't been served in the same way. It's encouraging to see that others have found the courage to move on and rebuild their lives. The key takeaway from this story is the importance of taking care of oneself and building a fulfilling life, regardless of the choices and actions of others. Seeking personal development and living well can be powerful forms of self-revenge and lead to a better future. Thank you for listening. We hope you enjoyed the story. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and leave a comment if you wish. See you next time.